Hey, this is Jimmy Jive, and you're listening to Motor City Rock Talk. Today, my guest is a lead guitarist, lead vocalist from a local band who uh, a friend of mine turned me on to called The Zots. Today, I'm talking to Bobby Noxious. How are you doing today, brother? All right, man. How are you today? I'm doing good. I just want to say I really enjoy both the albums of yours. I've been listening to them quite, quite a bit in my car. I find it real entertaining and uh, real uplifting. I really uh, I really dig it. Anyway, let's get, let's get started with a little bit background. Where exactly are you from and where is the band from? Right now we're living in Dermore Heights. Oh, okay. Right outside of Detroit there off of 94. So okay. Easy access gig. Right. And uh, is that where you're from originally? Originally I'm from Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park? Okay. And uh, tell me a little bit about some of your early influences. Who are some of the bands that influenced your uh, guitar playing or guitar style? Ooh, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, actually, I would have to go back to, you know, the early years of like Jimmy Page, uh, Ace Really, Jimi Hendrix, you know, all the greats pretty much started me, you know, back in the day. Even though, even though I was never intended to be a guitar player, so oh, really? I kind of got a late, I got a late start on that. Uh, yeah, I noticed in one of the things I read that you played bass in another band. Is that true? Correct. Yeah, okay. I played uh, bass, bass for a band called the Farleys. Yeah, yeah. So what, uh, what turned you on to playing guitar? I, it's always been a thing of mine. You kind of, because I'm a songwriter, you kind of need to know kind of an instrument. It's good to, you know, have something to play, you know, to come up with songs. Sure. Uh, you know, my parents got me an acoustic guitar when. I was younger, which led to electric guitar, and then my friends started playing with them a little bit. But basically, I was just a singer back then. Oh, okay. So I, you know, I had guitars come and go, and never really attached myself to playing guitar. And then, out of necessity, I, you know, I, I started playing second guitar in another band. I see. And then, um, and then I continued on as a singer, and then I started playing. We lost the bass player, so I stepped in and played bass because I knew I play guitar. You know, kind of know I play guitar. You can kind of catch on the bass player. Sure, sure. You know, um, just simple stuff. You know. All right. Sorry. Who are some of the bands that influenced the style of of the Zots? In other words, if you had to if you had to pick a few bands that uh, would have influenced that style, who would you say it was? Uh, definitely, we we've, we've told people this a hundred times. Probably it's a combination of the Ramones. Yeah, Beast Cheap Trick. Well, I love both those bands. I love both of those bands. They're both phenomenal. But that's kind of what I was picturing in the sense of like power punk. Yeah, power punk and stuff. Some really catchy lyrics, real catchy uh, tunes. Like I said, I got my buddy went and saw you, and I was supposed to go to the show, but I was sick that night when you you guys opened up for uh, the Incurables at Road Rangers. Oh yeah, that was our last show. Yeah. Yeah, and I was supposed to go. That I was sick. My buddy went to it. He picked up all the CDs you guys had. And and they had you just have the the two the fire it up and the upside down yeah that's all we have oh okay well i gotta tell you like i said they're they're really really cool i like both of them a lot are there certain places like you said your last gig was at road rangers and i think you're playing are you playing there again on the 29th is that right yes, yes we are <laughs> yeah well i'm gonna try and make it out to that show because after hearing your music and all that and you know I, my buddy actually went there because he knew the drummer from the incurables and i i said well you know talk to them about you know possibly doing an interview but i was so impressed with your music too i said well i got to talk to these guys i've always loved that kind of stuff i had a band back in the late 80s that did stuff similar to this you know and we were a three-piece and i played bass and vocals and stuff so i was really attracted to it what other places uh what other bars do you guys play at uh, the logger house Mm-hmm. PJ's Logger House, now it's Logger House. Right. We've done Token. We've done all those local bars around the Detroit area. We've got a show coming up at the uh, New Dodge in a few months. Well, that's cool. Uh, fall, you know, uh, Outer Limits. Mm-hmm. It's just pretty much the regular circuit. How often do you play at the Token? Because that's, that's like a mile and a half from me. It's, 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 it's whenever. Kind of one of those, you know. We're, I, I've seen um, the owner was posting something. He's looking for bands. I was telling Sean, you know, jump on one of those but we never got out you know never think it our foot in the door fast enough but yeah anytime we could get in there I love playing Selkin that's a big room yeah it's a big room and uh, I don't know if you'd played there much in the past but they've really they've really brought up the sound and the whole setup in that place from the old days because it's gone through a lot of major changes I mean how long has this band been together first it's going on I believe eight years wow that's yeah, a good eight run years this summer so you know it was just this supposed to be uh, a fun little thing we were going to throw together Sean and I, you know, just we're, we're going to be a, just a two piece, you know, and then it just we decided that maybe we should get a bass player, and then it just you know, escalated from there. Well, I did also notice that from the one album, uh, uh, Fire It Up, to the new album, you've got a different bass player. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did that yeah. one, the guy 
just not work out or we wanted somebody different? What happened there? Yeah, the first bass player, well, that, that bass player fire it up, but yeah, he just, he just didn't work out. He's a good oh. guy and everything. We love him, but he just, yeah, he's just kind of going against the grain a little bit. You know? I see. And then the last bass player we just lost, he, he just quit on his own because I think he was, his hand, his, his plate was too full, I guess. You know, oh. and then, uh, but everything works out, you know, they say, you know, God closes the door, you know, he opens the window. Right, that's true. So you and Sean, that's your drummer, you guys mm -hmm. start, more or less started together? Correct, yeah. She's, she's a hell of a fun. drummer. She's a hell of a drummer. She's good, she's gotten great over the years. She started off, it was, you know, fiddling around with the drum set that I had, the cheap little drum set that I never played. She's like, can I play your drums? I'm like, yeah, go knock yourself out, you know. <laughs> And that was the start of it, you know. And then she, then she went on to be in that, uh, she joined a uh, Ramones tribute band. That's what she was modeling her drumming style after, but she was a big Ramones band, you know. So. Right. And who, what was the name of that band? The Hormones. Oh, wow. That's a cool name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any uh, significance or, or anything at all to the name, the Zods? How did you come up with that? Actually, the, <laughs> that's the funniest thing is, you know, you're, you're always in these bands, you know, throughout your life, you always kind of come up with cool names and stuff. And you, you pick the most eyeball stuff and come to find out this was actually our last name. So we finally just decided just to use my last name. Oh, that's your last name, Zod? Yeah. I actually use the last name Lazat. Oh, right. Yeah, French it would be Lazat, you know. And, and is that Sean's last name? Are you guys related? Yeah, we're married. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that makes it convenient, huh? Yeah, yeah a little <laughs> bit, yeah. So, everything's in one house. Well, that and she knows where you are when you're out at night playing because she's there with you. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, no, no, I can't. No, uh, it's cool. great. It's great. You know, she used to be a fan, you know, be out there taking pictures and stuff, and now she's on stage with me, you know, that's, that's pretty kick ass. Yeah, that's really kick ass. And like I said, you know, for somebody that just picked up and just started to play and all that, she's very, very good. Yeah, she's totally self taught. I mean, she tried to take a couple lessons, but they just moved too slow for her. Right, <laughs> right. I can understand that. I understand also from I'm reading the liner notes a bit on both these CDs that you recorded these both at Temper Mill? Yes, both of them, yeah. How, how is that studio? That's an excellent studio. I, don't, I love Temper Mill. That's where we'll always go to record our stuff. I don't blame you because, I mean, they both sound phenomenal. I, I noticed you, you, the guy that did the sound and all that or the production on this is not Dave Feeney. No, 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 not Dave, no. We got uh, Tony Romero. Was there a reason for that? Was Dave not available? Or I don't know. We just, uh, well, actually, when it started off, a um, friend of ours, well, our, actually, our first bass player that was the, when we started the band, his dad suggested we go to Temper Mill and talk to uh, get Tony. Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, we didn't do nothing about it. We are like, we're just going by him because he's a, a seasoned professional. And we're like, yeah, we're going to take his word for it, you know. Right. And it would turn out to be great. Tony's great. I mean, he knows exactly what we want. The, the second CD was way easier than the first CD because he already knew our sound and how, he knew how to set the settings and you know, kind of how to coax us along a little bit. Right. Know? I wondered on that because I've asked other other uh, performers when they go in the studio, did he give you input on anything as far as that? In other words, you know, do this a little different? change this around or was he just there to mix the sound actually he threw uh, he threw a bunch of great ideas at us we, we changed some of the songs because of him mm -hmm. you know he's like kind of some of the background folks like why don't you guys do this and then he would go and layer it with his little magic that he does on that board that he has and then play it back for us like wow dude that's great we didn't even thought about doing it like that you know yeah that's a, that's when you you know you have a good producer that can actually I think come up with ideas like that that you know lend themselves quite to the band did you ever consider or do you think in any way it would lend itself to your music uh, having keyboards or a second guitar no keyboards no I, I, yeah I, I, I not not the kind of music we're playing maybe if i don't know maybe i do play a little piano and i haven't gotten that far as to incorporate any of that into any of my music yet right. so, um but i could say it, it, it's a it's an option in the future right that way well, I didn't mean I didn't really mean keyboards in the sense of like a, a major backup instrument, just something for effects, even if it was like synth, some kind of synth sound, just to build it up or whatever. Not that you need it, but I'm just saying it might it might be something to consider as far as like down the road if you want to get a little bit more adventurous, I guess. Oh yeah, I'm always open for all kinds of you know, anything, just something, using something like that. Yeah, I, I would never turn it out for sure. What about a second guitar player? Yeah, <laughs> I've been questioning that one myself lately. I'm like, man, it's getting rougher as you get older, you mm -hmm. know. 
second guitar would probably be great, or actually another a lead player, and I just take over playing rhythm. You know. Well, you got some, you got some good licks there. There's some good licks you got going and stuff, but it definitely fits the music. You know, there's no issues there. Yeah, it's, it's just um, I, I often thought about that though, having a second guitar. So it would be it sounds fuller, but we're kind of, we're kind of going for that three piece punk mm -hmm. kind of style, and it kind of works for us. It definitely does. Sometimes when we're playing live, and you kind of drop once the guitar drops out for a lead, uh, right. it's off the bass player, and it kind of sometimes it doesn't fill in you know with the background like you want it to. Right, yeah, I, I've had it, our band's had issues with that in the past too. You really got to have a thick sound on the bass to fill it in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I know there's some uh, there's some pedals out there. Like I say, I'm a bass player, keyboard player, and there's some bass pedals out there now that can double up the sound for the bass, create almost like a bass, yeah, a fat bass tone if that's what you want, and a secondary tone too that could be more like a rhythm sounding guitar. You guys have thought of anything like that? Do you use it? Use any kind of effects pedals that do any kind of stuff like that? Yeah, I kind of try to stare straight away from effects. I kind of just play just guitar through the amp or mm -hmm. something. I do have a, you know, I do have effects and everything, but playing what we're playing as fast as we're playing and stuff like that, it's kind of hard to shift around on the pedals and hit yeah. everything exactly right. And I'm always afraid I'm going to screw it up. So I'm like, I'm just going to create everything where I don't need that. To use them, believe me, I've got effects and stuff I would love to use. And, you know, the flangers and the choruses right. and all that stuff. But, uh, the wah wah pedal, I love a wah wah pedal. Yeah, but no, I can understand it because a lot of your stuff is uh, it's very straight ahead and uh, and it, and it could, especially playing live, be kind of tricky adding that into it. Um, speaking of equipment, what kind of guitar and what kind of application do you use? Oh, I have uh, I have Les Paul. Mm, okay. So Les Paul, I have Les Paul Standard. Got that a couple years ago, and that's a beauty, man. I think right. that's the best guitar I've ever bought in my life. The Starburst. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the sun, Sunburst, yeah. Sunburst. It looks like the East Freely guitar. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, man, I've seen that in the store, and I'm like, oh. That must have been pricey, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, I didn't start out that way. I started off with a, looking at a, another studio, and I'm like, well, because I've had a studio forever. Right. And, uh, and then uh, that thing just stuff. Uh, it's like put a cinder block around your neck. So I'm like, you know, I check out these guitars. Now this one's a thousand bucks. This one's... All right, this one's eighteen hundred dollars. I'm going up the, you know, I'm going up the ladder here. I'm like, well, that's nice. That's even better than the last one. Just check out this one on the top shelf up there for, you know, like three grand, you know. <laughs> and the guy pulls it down. I'm like, oh man, why did I do this? And that was it. That was it. I fell in love with it. And what kind of uh, amp do you use? Uh, Marshall. Marshall. Yeah. It's a single amp or double? Um, it's a, it's a, it's a, I got the Marshall head with a two twelve cabinet. Oh, okay. And, um, I got the JVM two ten. Yeah, the JVM two ten. Yep, two ten H. Oh, that's cool. Do you guys have any videos out? I mean, I, I did see one that you kind of threw together in your basement there from Christmas, but are there any videos that you guys have done, or is that something for down the line? Yes, that's definitely down the line. We've been talking about that recently, too. Uh, we have no, like, production-made videos. This is what we've thrown together off the Internet. You know, there's mm -hmm. programs you don't put pictures together and cycle through what it's on the plan or something. Right. Uh, live stuff, you know, the, you know, from the bars. We saw quite a few of those, and it was really cool because you guys have a, like I say, have a good sound, very good stage presence. You look good up there. Everything, everything's top notch. Are you guys all pretty much around the same age? Yeah, pretty much. So what is that? Your forties or? Yeah, sure. <laughs> My, my first number changed this year. Been there, done that twice. Uh, I'm up to the six. <laughs> up to Myself. what? I'm up to six now. I'm in that club now too, man. <laughs> you just got there. <laughs> just got there in February. Now, speaking of the releases, the the two CDs that you put out, have there been any thought? Because I, and I know it's expensive to do to, to have done anything as far as vinyl, that the resur resurgence of vinyl that's gone on now. Oh man, yeah, I would love to put something on an album. That'd be great. You know? we'll have a nice album printed up. We're, we're on this one, um, a few years ago we got on this compilation album, and it's a blue disc, it's really cool, you know, and it's, uh, I treasure that, you put it in the frame and everything, it's, it's, it's cool to have your name on an album, the CD. But yeah, I would love to do that, the prices would come down, they're very expensive. Today. I know. That's the bad thing, is right now everything is kind of budgeted, and we're kind of, you know. Sure, I understand that. Well, I was telling another artist uh, I interviewed a while back, that despite the fact that they're expensive, if you've got a fairly decent band, 
fan base? Because I know you got a Facebook page. If you put a feeler out there to see how many people would be interested in it, you know, I think you can get like a hundred of them for like a thousand dollars. Now I know that's a lot of money, but if you're charging thirty a piece for them and you got enough interest, you know, in the sense of pre-sale, you know, you can right. make your money back quick. That's a thought. Yeah, that's food for thought. Definitely. I never thought of it that way. It's uh, I, like I said, I knew an artist that I said we got to get this out on vinyl. It was the same way. It was really expensive, but he put the word out there and they had. And he was so shocked at how many people that were literally interested in vinyl, you know, from our age group. You yeah, know, yeah, we all grew up with it. <laughs> yeah, so I love vinyl, man. I, I, in fact, I was telling you about that one that compilation we got put on. Uh, we got the album, we're like, wait a minute, we don't have a record player. We had to run out and buy a record player. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't but have no. a record player at 60 years old. I got rid of those years ago, you know, because everything was CD and digital and everything's on the computer. And, you yeah. Know, and, get, and it takes up so much space, all your records. I used sure. to have so many records, you know. Yeah, I understand that. I, I can totally appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about, you say, CDs and streaming. I know you're on Spotify because that's... That's where I check out most of the music, the new stuff. How, how do you feel about streaming as opposed to just, you know, whether it's CD or, or vinyl or whatever? Have you had success with it? Did you make any money off of it? No, we make nothing off that. Nobody does. <laughs> right. I was going to say. <laughs> I just seen a thing. I think it was one of these artists, Snoop Dogg or something like that. just got a billion dollar. They played like a billion dollars, a billion streams. And he got like forty thousand dollars. So like a lot to us, but that's a billion streams. And you know, it's like it's like wow, that's a lot. You should be getting like at least a million bucks. You know? Yeah, you would think. You're right. But the thing that's what I don't like about it. The artists don't really get much from what I hear. You know? No, they don't. Typically, they don't at all. Like you said, you can get that many streams, and that sounds like a lot of money, but it's really not. Especially to somebody like him. You know? Yeah. In the big scheme of things, that's really who's making all this money. You know, it's the executives. You know? Oh, of course, of course. You know, I mean, nothing wrong with. Capitalism, but come on, you know. Yeah, and, and that was how it, it typically was back in the day with vinyl cassettes and CDs, also. But if the band had uh, had good management, maybe a lawyer or whatever, it was all about the uh, the rights to the publishing. That's where the real money real money came into play. So if you you know you ever think right. of that down the line, that's that's what it is. The other thing I noticed is uh, at your site there you have uh, you have stickers, you know, mm -hmm. Zot stickers. What other kind of merchandise do you sell at your shows? Oh, well, we got stickers, oh, you know, like various ones. We keep coming up with new ones. And now we're, we're shirts. We got shirts. Um, in fact, we got a new, we got a shipment of shirts coming in here any day now. Brand new ones. Oh, cool. With our new logo, our new, uh, we had an artist draw us up as cartoons. Oh, yeah, yeah. In that picture, and now we're going to have that on our shirt. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, how did you come across, or who's doing this merchandise for you? Is it someone local? We got somebody in the garden, yeah, locally doing the shirts for us, yeah. Oh, okay. That could be expensive, too. Did you have to get a bundle on that? Did you have to order quite a few to get a deal? Yeah, and it's not really, it's, it's. I tell you, we ordered shirts, I would say, about four years ago, and it's probably half of what we had to pay now, you know, because everything's so expensive now, so now you're paying way more for shirts. We're going to have to start charging $15 a shirt. We were only charging $10 before. Even 15 is cheap these days. Yeah, but we, you know, we're, you know, we try to keep it down, you know, so that people will buy our stuff. They go, wow, sure. $10, that's a deal, you know? It is. That, you know? It's like, and we, we don't make any money off of it, really. We actually lose money, more likely. Yeah, but, you know, it's good to have that stuff, and that's, that's walking promotion, so I love that. That's the, you know, it's the stickers that the, um, people put them on their cars or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, toolbox. I got pictures from people you know, sending me to something. I put your sticker on my refrigerator, on my toolbox. That's cool. And people see that and they go, hey, I've heard those guys, you know. That's what it is. It's all about that you got to spend money to make money, so to speak. It. Exactly. Word yeah. of mouth and all that that gets out. What we're working with right now, that's pretty much it, you know, with the small budget, you know, trying to do big things, you know. Right. Yeah, well, that's very, very cool. How long are these... Uh, CD's been out, but the latest one upside down. When exactly did that come out? Well, that one just came out this last year. Say, in the fall of this last year. Are you working on any new material? Or, I mean, not to record right away, but I mean, have you got anything new that you're working on yet? Yeah, um, I've, I've thrown a few things. We use, we use an online app called Dropbox. Right. If I have, if I have an idea, I throw it into Dropbox and, and then they, 
them too can listen to it, tell them what they think about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But we got stuff in there right now we're working on. And like I said, we just got the new bass player back in like November, and then um, he's still catching up, you know. Right. <laughs> like, we, is this all you have as far? I mean, it, this is quite a bit, but I mean, two CDs in eight years, is, was there anything else you had out at one time other than this? Well, we had, uh, when we first started, we put out a five song EP. That was okay. the first thing we put out. Um, and that was out for a couple years, and then we worked on the Fire It Up CD. After we lost our first bass player, we got the new bass player and had all these songs written, and we wanted to go to the studio, and we got that one knocked out. And that was probably been five, five years ago, six years ago, we right. put that one out. So it's like every two to three years, we'll put out a CD, I guess. That EP you're mentioning, is that available anywhere to check out? No, actually, it's the same songs that are on um, Fire It Up, oh. the five songs. Yeah, and it, we just went back and re-recorded it, and remastered it, and added a new bass player. And some more songs, I imagine. Because, and uh, more songs, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we came out with a full CD that time, and then, uh, and then the, the, the Upside Down one, we just put that out last year. And that one, uh, yeah, that, one was, uh, that one was really way better, turned out way better than I thought. I was happy with that one. Yeah, well, like I said, they're both really good. You, you were talking about, you know, you were selling your shirts and all that for $10, $15, which is very reasonable. What are you selling the CDs for? I want to say 10. CD or, or it all depends on how we're feeling at the time. So a lot of times we just give them away. Here you go. Yeah. It's like, uh, I can't help myself sometimes. That's pretty nice of you. And like you said, sometimes you got to, you know, just to promote it, you got to just do things like that, which, you know, it's good for the biz, good for the band. Let's talk a little bit about some of these songs you have on, it, on the new sure. album. Let's Ride, man. That's, I mean, oh, killer, thank you. killer opening track. I've always wondered on, on, on local bands in general, how you decide to, you know, the arrangement, in other words, putting songs in order. Was there much thought to that, or did your producer come up with any of that, or? You know, I can't really remember what we went through to put that together, but for some reason, Let's Ride just seemed like a right out of the gate kind of song, yeah. you know? And so we threw that right there, and we wanted to keep, you know, some of the other, you know, uh, catchy songs f out front, the kind of mediocre songs, if there are any, you know, in the kind of in the middle somewhere, you know, and, and then it ended on powerful notes, you know. He's the last song, and that's kind of like, that's an that's a ass kicker, too. Now, uh, I was going to ask you about that. Is that more or less like a theme for you guys? Is that a theme song? Is that a closer? For yeah, that's shows? a theme song, exactly. <laughs> LGC, L LGC stands for Let's Go Zion. Right, yeah, figured that. But yeah. I mean, do you close your shows with that? Do you open up your show with that? or? It's it's pretty much a closer. Yeah, we just, we put it towards the end. It's easy, you know, if it's not the last song, it's like second to the last or something. You know? Oh, okay. Because the reason I asked that is one of the bands you mentioned as an influence, Cheap Trick. You know, uh, they always open their show with Hello There, and then they mm -hmm. close their show with Goodbye There. That was the first song. And, or, or I should say the same song, but just different lyrics. Uh, had you ever thought of doing that, as far as like using that as an opener and a closer, or is that kind of too corny? Yeah, I, yeah if I could change it, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that would be something interesting to do. I, I know what you're talking about, the Cheap Jerk stuff. That was, yeah, that was, that was great when they did that. Yeah, I never thought of that, but yeah. Yeah, it would have to be some, you know, like, they got, you know, they changed the words a little bit. And I was going to say, even if you weren't playing it as an opener, if you came out to it, you know, had it playing through the speakers, you know, an edit, you know, kind of an edited version. You know, a lot of bands use, you know, intro music for the shows and whatnot. Do you guys do anything like that or just come out and hit it? We just come out and hit it, yeah. <laughs> I, I know what you're saying, though. I've, I've often thought about doing some kind of little before the beginning, you know, and you know, but yeah, it's uh, is it, we might in the future. I always want to play the Three Stooges theme before we go yeah. on stage, you know. <laughs> seems fitting, you know. <laughs> the other thing I was going to ask you about a little bit, there again, on, on the CDs, are you the main the main writer? Or, you, yep. or did you write them all yourself? I wrote them all except for, there's a couple songs that are covers. Like I Trusted You on the second CD, that's a cover. Oh, it is? Yeah, that's familiar a, with that. That's an that's a Andy Kaufman song. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. So recently, that, <laughs> that, that's really cool. We've been playing it for like six or seven years. I just found out that it was actually an Andy Kaufman song. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. You've been playing it for six or seven years. You didn't know that? <laughs> no, what? actually, I thought it was a friend of ours, Skid Marks, who plays yeah. the band Seatbelt. Yes. He had done it with a previous band of his called uh, Motor City Orphan. And then uh, his son was our first bass player, and uh, he got in the band, and he suggested, it, said, hey, we should do I Trusted You, you know, my dad did the song, and blah, 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 you know. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, let's do it. That sounds a great song. Yeah, let's do it. 
other standout tunes from either of these two albums or both these albums that seem to go over it better than others live? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are the ones with the most profanity in them. Go over better. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, like, uh, get out of my way. That's always a good one. I've had people come up to me after the show and go, wow, that's my favorite song, dude. You know, <laughs> I'm like, really? Wow, thank you very much. I'm like, uh, that was one of the easiest songs I ever wrote in my life. <laughs> Like I said, I like them all, and I think Let's Ride is a, is a great opener. Now, that is, is that a song maybe that you're using as an opener right now? We have been, yeah. Last couple shows, we started off with Let's Ride. Okay. It seems to be working for us. It's a, you know, like right out of the gate kind of song. And yeah. It tells people who we are, you know. And I really love the song, I Don't Like You. Another one that's a good one that people seem to uh, appreciate a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, one's, uh, that was another one that was not too hard to write. <laughs> I so. And, of course, the other one. The other ones that really stuck out in my mind were, you know, especially because of the uh, the titles and whatnot, Unfriended and Shut Your Mouth. Oh, yes, those were, <laughs> those were fun ones. Well, Shut Your Mouth was actually, that was an older song from a long time ago that I wrote probably over 20-something years ago, and then could never get a band from that time to the Zots to ever do it. And then the right. Zots, you know, we kind of just said, uh, I kind of just said, we're doing it, you know. <laughs> Was that one of the songs that was on the uh, early EP? No, that was, uh, actually it was just a four song EP, I'm looking at right now. Oh, oh okay. That was five, that was four. No, that was, uh, that was later, yeah, we recorded for that, but I had written that song like 25 years ago, probably. Oh, okay. I love the tongue-in-cheek attitude, tongue-in-cheek lyrics are really, really good. I always love that kind of stuff, where you're not overly serious about it and all that. Now, right. you, you had mentioned I Trusted You being a cover, mm -hmm. well, at least an obscure cover at, at that. Do you guys do much cover? in your shows? Not really, maybe a couple. If we're doing like a, maybe a 13 song list, it's maybe two, maybe three at the most, and that's just, just in case people want to hear something they know. Yeah. Right, and, yeah. and what, what covers do you have in your back pocket, so to speak, that you would use? <laughs> this one, I was looking at the cover list as soon as you said that, and the first one I was called Cock in My Pocket. <laughs> Iggy song. Oh, Iggy, well, oh, that fits. I was thinking you were going to mention something from the Ramones. Yeah, we do a couple. Now we're doing, um, God, what are we doing Ramones now? We're doing, uh, we're doing their rendition of Palisade Park. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, that was a Chuck Berry song. I mean, yes. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry's from the Gong Show. Yeah, yeah. I never knew that until, like, recently, too. I'm like, I didn't know who wrote that. Wow, he wrote that. That's well, the great yeah. thing about the Ramones, too, is their songs are so short and so fast, just right there. No ballads. Yeah, and that's what we're kind of trying to model ourselves off. Short songs, fast, you know, just don't have to get too deep with it, you know, and just get in, get out. Kind of yeah, thing. a lot of fun. Just to, uh, get... A lot of fun in between, yeah. Yeah. Now, you don't have any ballads or anything, I think. Any ballads? Yeah, any kind of slower songs like that. I don't the mean The one we have on that CD, on, it's on the upside down, is that When It's Over. Okay. That's different. It's a different kind of song. A little depressing, but different. Who are some of the fun, uh, you met, I mentioned that you obviously just played your last gig with the Incurables. Who are some of the other bands that you played with opening or, or headlining? Like local bands, you mean? Yeah. Let's see, the Cinecide, we've done with those guys. Right. Uh, 3D Invisibles, um, Elvis Hitler. Yeah, real clever stuff. Uh, you know, Green Haze, you know, how can you not like that? You know? <laughs> I love that song, man. <laughs> it's classic. Have you guys opened for anyone at a national level? You, those were oh, yeah. Who have you opened up at a national level? Did, uh, let's see, well, last one was Camelback. Oh, really? Wow. And then uh, before that was 38 Special. Where were those gigs at? Uh, the Uncle Sam Jam Festival over here in Woodhaven. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah, and then uh, one time we got to play on the riverfront, open up for uh, Starship. Oh, that's fun. That, a great location. Now, do you guys book all your own gigs? Or, I mean, are you, do you do your own road work as far as that, or do you have a manager? No, we do our own stuff. Usually it's just Sean. She does everything. She's She's an online person to do all that stuff, you know, go on there and contact people. So she was probably the one who uh, contacted me when I uh, yeah. sent you the message. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah, she does all that. She handles the accounts and stuff like that, sets up all that stuff, the website and everything. Well, anyway, man, I'm going to let you go. I really appreciate talking to you. Thank you for taking the time out today to do this. Um, and I uh, wish you guys the best. I'm going to try and really try and come out and see you in the 29th. Because I know my buddy really dug you guys, too. And he'll want to come out and see you again. So look forward well, to doing that. If you make it out there, man, come on up to us and let us know who you are, man. Because I'll be give you a big old handshake, brother. Oh, we'll do that, man. We'll do that for sure. And th thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. Having Not a, a problem, man. Really enjoyed 
talking to you, man. You guys keep it up. Keep the music going. You know, keep writing these awesome songs, man. Just well, awesome, you. man. I love thank it when I come so across much. stuff like this. Well, anyway, man, like I said, I'm going to let you go. And you have a good evening. You too. You go by Jimmy or James? I go by Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy, so it's such a pleasure to talk to you, brother. I appreciate it, too, man. You take care and have a good night. Take care, too, Al. All right, brother. See you later. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, this is Jimmy Jive, and you've been listening to Motor City Rock Talk. That was Bobby from the Zot. Uh, a, a real fun band. A real, a real energetic band. If you haven't heard of them, go check them out on YouTube. Go check them out on Spotify. If you like good power punk, like you said, the Ramones, Cheap Trick kind of stuff, you're going to love these guys. A lot of them. And they're going to be playing again like a, like he said at Road Rangers on the 29th and come out and see them. Support local bands as much as you can. And speaking of support, if you can and you like these interviews, it would really help the show out if you'd hit the like button and subscribe. It doesn't cost me a thing, it just shows me there's interest in it. Anyway, with that said, as I like to say, keep rocking. Yeah.